doesn't seem to be that way around here very often because we have a little bit of fun and the uh, sermon today will be predominantly jokes and story and uh, uh, songs will be kind of interesting today. There's comics in your bulletin. Um, and uh, uh, there was also a little gag in the announcements that I don't know if anybody read the announcements. Yeah. There we go. So, uh, uh, maybe this week, this week, that's fun. Okay. So, uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, Wonderful Wednesday is coming up. Uh, there's a bus trip tomorrow to see the eclipse. Uh, so, a number of us heading up there to see that. Everybody be safe if that happens. Spaghetti dinner is coming up. Uh, Kip, what do you mean say? Thanks, everybody that signed up. If you forget what time you're supposed to be there, see Barb Brown or myself, and we will let you know. Pies need to be here in the gathering room by 3 o'clock. Okay, thanks. Um, we, just a quick uh, little addition to our schedule. On April 19th, we're going to have some hide and seek going on at the church here. And so if you have kids or grandkids, or if you just want to play hide and go seek, and that pizza can come on Friday night. Uh, we're going to have a good time uh, that evening. So it's not just for kids. If you want to come hide, just bring it on. Uh, other announcements need to be made? Tom, I have no idea what you're saying here right now. What, I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. I don't know. So. If you go see the eclipse tomorrow, if you're going on a bus trip, if you read it, have you seen if you wear reds and greens, that as it gets dark, the color change will affect how your eyes see color. So normally your eyes adjust how it sees color over a period of time as it gets dark, because it gets dark so fast, red and green are supposed to be weird. So especially if you're going on a bus trip, reds and greens tomorrow. What's it called, Tom? Penjerby. Penjerby. Pretty sure that's not right, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, something, it's something close to that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I did. Uh, we, we were also having a little bit of fun this morning um, uh, as people were coming in. Charlie was asking people if they found Jesus this morning. Uh, have you found Jesus yet? Yep. Okay. There's a couple Jesuses around here. Uh, yeah, actually, there's 300 Jesuses hidden throughout this church, and uh, so after church, we're going to have a little uh, uh, Easter Jesus hunt, okay, mainly because we've got to clean up all these Jesuses, okay, so if you want to take a Jesus or two home, there are 300 in this church somewhere, uh, and if you were in Sunday school, there were probably five to eight in every Sunday school class. Uh, the cafe and the lobby hallway, and then there's a lot in here, including a couple, I would say, fairly impressive hiding jobs. Uh, so, if you want Jesus, um, you can have Jesus. And you just tell everyone this week that our church is full of Jesus, right? <laughs> um, so make sure you take at least a Jesus on your way home and find some Jesuses around you. Uh, literally, most of you, there's probably a Jesus quite near you in the sanctuary. <laughs> Uh, so, anybody else announcements? The Jaden is our liturgist today. He's going to give you a little background on Holy Humor, and then we'll get started into the liturgy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Holy Humor Sunday, and it's also called Hilarity Sunday, God's Laughter Sunday, Bright Sunday, or Holy Fool Sunday. It has roots in a number of different Christian traditions. Churches in 15th century Bavaria used to celebrate the Sunday after Easter as racist pastors, God's joke, or Easter laugh. The priests would deliberately include amusing stories and jokes in their sermons in an attempt to make a faithful laugh. After the sermon, people would gather together to play practical jokes on one another and tell funny stories. It was their way of celebrating the resurrection of Christ, the supreme joke God played on Satan by raising Jesus from the dead. The observation, the, the observance of racist pastoralists was officially outlawed by Pope Clement X in the 17th century. Perhaps people were having too much fun. In the Orthodox tradition, people would gather together on Easter Monday to tell jokes and funny stories and to dance and eat together. Please join me for the confession and creed for Bright Sunday. We believe in God who made us in His image. We live, we love, we laugh. We believe in 
through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Lord and Savior. We believe in the Holy Spirit, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Forgive us, Lord, when we take ourselves too seriously, when we don't claim happiness that is rightfully ours as your children, when we forget that you will have the last laugh in this world. Stand with us this morning as we sing the Easter version of Go Tell It on the Mountain.
concerns that we need to lift together before the Lord today. Can you say that louder so they can hear? Yes. Our, uh, my friend Lindsay uh, has a little guy who's five years old. We have been praying for him because he's in need of a heart transplant. And last week on Easter Sunday, he got his transplant. So just um, pray for them. His mom, Lindsay, also had a heart transplant um, when she was younger. So it's been it's been a whole, a whole thing. So I know they would really appreciate your prayers. Chuck Schiff's had some uh, health issues for a little while here and whatnot, but tomorrow is Esther's 96th birthday, Tuesday is Chuck's 96th birthday, so have a chance this week, give him a call, uh, send him a card. Chuck and Esther show both 96 this week. Let's go to God together then in prayer. Lord, as this world is talking about earthquakes and talking about eclipses and worry about elections and just so much swirling anxiety, thank you that we can be people of hope. Thank you that we can be people of trust. We're afraid that we would be people that enjoy life, that notice the funny things, that enjoy the, the strange and the peculiar, the, the amazing and the astounding things of life. May we be people that notice. Lord, let there be safety tomorrow as people travel, as people try to enjoy this eclipse. And let us be reminded that you put stars in heavens. We're closer to earth here. We have some real concerns for Jean as she's recovering and, and looking to a surgery here upcoming to Dave Helen and his recovery. Thankful for Lindsay's son getting his heart transplant and pray that things would continue to, to be well for that child and that the body would continue to connect with that heart and that the child would grow to have a great heart. Thankful for her birthday for the shows. Pray that they would celebrate well with each other and with their family. And Lord, we do pray for Marge and her family in this time. For that this be an easy passing, guide nurses and doctors as they care to be with family in this grief. Lord, as we celebrate here today, that we try to find joy even in difficult circumstances, meet us. That we may be truly thankful for all you have done for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things, joining together in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. that we really want to do is give everybody an update on our sanctuary renovation and how things are coming along. So we're going to be doing some work in this space here this summer. And, uh, and uh, so John Hudson is going to do that at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Just a quick update here. Uh, the project is going along just as planned. So the last time I was in, I kind of gave a rough timeline and description of the project, so everything that I spoke about before is, is on track and on schedule. Um, all of the subcontractors have been lined up and scheduled for the work. And just to kind of go over a rough schedule for you, uh, pretty much the same as what I spoke about before. So we're going to begin the uh, demolition on the, on the sanctuary area and removing the pews uh, June 9th. So the month of June will be demolition and construction. As soon as we're done taking things apart, the crews will come in and they'll start putting things back together.
desert, replacing the windows, and uh, moving on that way. July will be the plaster and painting, and then in August, we're going to have the flooring and putting the pews back in. So the goal is to have everything finished up by Labor Day. Um, that's a realistic schedule, and we think that that's entirely possible. So we started spending money. Uh, we have a 50% down payment on the windows at this time. The down payment has been made to Church Interior. That's the one company that's going to oversee a lot of the design and uh, some of the construction work. And the air conditioning units have been ordered and, and down payments were on there. So, so far, we have that uh, thermometer in the back of the room here. Uh, so far, we have roughly $27,000 in donations and pledges. Thank you to you for that. Um, if you haven't made one or you would like to make a donation, there are um, pledge cards like this in the back. They're to the left of the double door. And if you can fill that out, drop it in the offering basket at your convenience. So, um, thank you, and I'll probably give you another update here in a minute. Yeah, so we are moving along. I'm be excited to be opening up this space. If you're not familiar with a lot of the project, um, there's a report on the back table from the task force that we sort of did the basis for uh, the construction stuff. And what the whole, whole project, including air conditioning, and that includes downstairs air conditioning heat, is going to be about $330,000. And so um, we're hoping we have some money investments. We're hoping to raise a third of that. So for us to be at 27 already, we're, we're pretty excited. So if you want to make that commitment, or if you want to go ahead and give to that, that form is in the back. So thank you all so much. Let's uh, stand and sing the doxology as we present to God his offerings. <laughs>
But if you're new, this is Holy Hammer, so if you came expecting a sermon, you are going to be disappointed. We're going to have some jokes and stories here today. So, you know you're Presbyterian, so try to stretch. A little relaxation, a couple of deep breaths, and here we go. A little girl asked her mother, Mom, where do people come from? Mother answered, well, God made Adam and Eve, and they had children, and that's how humanity was made. A couple days later, the little girl asked her father the same question. Father answered, many years ago, there were monkeys, which the human race evolved from. The confused little girl returned to her mother and said, Mom, how is it possible that you told me that we were created by God, and Dad told me that we came from monkeys? And the mom said, that's simple. I was talking about my side of the family. <laughs> Small town had four churches, a Presbyterian, a Methodist, a Catholic, and a Baptist. All four had serious problems with squirrels in the church. Each church had fashioned its own meaning and, and, and got a plan to deal with the problem. The Presbyterians just decided that the squirrels were predestined to be there and left them alone. The Methodists decide that they should teach the squirrels lovingly the styles of Charles Wesley. They, they humanely trap them, release them in the park at the edge of town, and within three days all the squirrels are back. The Catholics also humanely trap them and they teach them to, uh, to, uh, to try to teach them each a rule of life that would help them to be more disciplined as squirrels. It did not work. The Baptists, however, had the best solution. But they voted the squirrels all as new members of their church. And now they only show up on Christmas and Easter. <laughs> as the man and his family drove home from work, he started complaining from church. He started complaining about everything. He said the music was too loud, the sermon was too long, the church announcements were unclear, the building was hot, the people were unfriendly. He went on and on and on complaining about the church. Finally, his observant son said, Dad, you've got to admit, it wasn't a real bad show for just a dollar. <laughs> I read the other day about a monarch in the Old Testament. He was only 12 inches tall. He was a terrible king, but he was a great ruler. <laughs> As the Sunday school teacher described how Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt, Little Jimmy interrupted and raised his hand. He said, my mommy looked back once while driving. She turned into a telephone pole. <laughs> Everybody knew the roof was leaking, but the, the church had kept putting off, fixing it, and putting off, fixing it. And finally, the ceiling was looking like it was about ready to fall. And so they said, we have got to do something. And the, the pastor got up. And they held a congregational meeting and said, we have got to raise money. During the meeting, a wealthy member, known wealthy member of the congregation, rose up from his seat and committed $300 to the project. And right in that moment, a piece of the ceiling fell and hit him right in the head. Somebody in the back of the church yelled, hit him again, Lord! <laughs> Pastor dies, he goes to heaven. He's standing in a long line waiting at heaven's gates, where each person is welcomed by St. Peter individually. So chat, chatting with the person in front of him, who tells him he's a New York City cab driver while he was alive. After a long while, the line slowed, moving forward, the pastor noticed that each person as they were getting there were, were welcomed by St. Peter, and they were given a robe and a set of wings and a staff and a brand new car. They noticed that the quality of all of these varied. Finally, uh, they get to the guy in front of them, this cab driver, and St. Peter says, well, welcome to heaven. Here is your silk robe, your satin wings, your platinum staff, and your brand new Lexus. 
man drives away happy. Then the pastor reaches the front of the line. St. Peter says, here's your burlap robe, your cotton wings, your wooden staff, and your brand new BW. And the pastor said, now wait a minute. That's a cab driver. I spent my entire life in ministry as a pastor, and he was a cab driver, and he got a better reward than I did. And St. Peter said, well, you've got to understand up here, we judge people based on results. And the pastor said, well, what do you mean results? I don't, I don't understand. And St. Peter said, well, when you preached, people slept. When he drove, people prayed. <laughs> that they each needed some confession time with each other because it was hard to do in the church. So they got together to earnestly pray for one another and confess their sins. The first one said, my problem is money. I steal. I steal money. I just can't help myself. Even from the offering, I will steal. Please pray for me. And the second pastor said, mine is, mine is women. I, I just, I have affairs and I have affairs at the church. It's really a problem. Pray for me. The third pastor just started to weep. They finally consoled him and said, well, well, just confess it. You'll feel better. The third pastor said, my problem is gossiping. He said, when I hear a secret, I tell everybody you know about <laughs> This is one of my favorites. A preacher went to a visit, an elderly woman from his church that had just had an operation. As he was sitting there, talking with her, he noticed the bowl of peanuts on the stand next to the bed. He began to eat a peanut here, a peanut there, but they visited for a long time. And as he noticed as he was getting ready to leave, that he had basically eaten this entire bowl of peanuts. Sister Jones, he said, I am so sorry, but I have eaten all of your peanuts. She replied, that's okay, Pastor. I already sucked all the chocolate off of those ones. <laughs> Pastor of this. I have 
what do you do with that information, right? So all day, I'm just nervous. Like, what's going to happen when two pastors show? Is it like two alley cats and both kind of face off? Do we like sword fight with Bibles? I don't know the etiquette for this. So all day, I am worried. And then I, I go to the funeral that evening. And the first thing I notice, I come over here, print my funeral. I found out about that day before. And then I drive over there, which is what I typically do. But when I drive over there, there are probably 30 people at the funeral home, smoking, all in pajamas. They're all in pajamas. And, and I thought, that's odd. You know what I mean? They're all in pajamas. And so I go in, I talk to the funeral director, and, and he says, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess the mom uh, that passed away, she always wore pajamas, so they decided they were all going to wear pajamas. We're pretty sure they were all going to wear pajamas no matter what. <laughs> but, so we, so I was kind of mad at this funeral director. I said, you mean I could have done a funeral in pajamas and he didn't tell me? <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm not going to get to do it because I'm going to sue it in their pajamas. <laughs> so I go to, the funeral director introduces me to uh, the, the one daughter. And uh, she said, yeah, I'm going to speak because I'm the most verbal. And I thought, that's a rather technical term. <laughs> you know what I mean? She didn't say, like, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm better in front of people. I'm going to speak. That's kind of the oldest. She said, I'm the most verbal. Like, I, when I hear that, one of my doctors is saying, so-and-so is not verbal anymore. You know what I mean? It's a very technical term. Probably the accurate term, I'm just saying. But it was, it was, it was a little tricky. And then she said, right before the funeral, well, I really hope that the pastor doesn't show up because I'm no mad at him right now because he hasn't been calling us back. And then I thought, you mean we still might have a second pastor show up? <laughs> By now, I had built this up in my head that like, we're going to have to wrestle. You know what I mean? I don't know what's going to happen. I said, lock the doors. Don't lock the doors. Lock the doors. Okay, so, so we started late because everyone felt like they needed to have another cigarette before we went. Last person to come in, last person to come in, smoke a cigarette down to the filter. She was eight months pregnant and she went walking in. Uh, and so then we finally get this funeral started. Now, when you're staring out at a funeral of people in pajamas, I, I, I realized really quickly, I'm not preaching. <laughs> There's a sermon page in this funeral I just took that out. That was not going to happen. I knew that. I'm mentally prepared for that. So we get to this eulogy of this verbal woman who is uh, going to talk about her mom. And um, for, well, the first thing she does when she gets up is she makes a joke. She says, "Well, Pastor didn't say said I wasn't supposed to talk too long, but now listen, don't do that. Like public service announcement." If you think you're going to be long, you think you shouldn't say something, don't make a joke about it. It just makes us all brace for impact. You know what I mean? <laughs> Probably don't do the thing that you're trying to excuse with a joke that you shouldn't be doing. Okay? Whenever somebody turns to me as a pastor and makes that kind of joke, I know we're in trouble. Okay? Actually, we weren't in trouble. Believe it or not, crisis averted. She was verbal. And she gave a really nice eulogy and spoke very well. And I thought... Crisis averted. This is great. Crisis averted. And then she said, and now I'm going to play a song. And I was like, what? We're going to play, we can talk about this. We have a sound system that can do this. And then she said, if my internet will work. And I thought, we're going to play a song. We haven't even tested the song. Praise God. Crisis averted. She pushes play. It starts to play. She puts it on the stand, the mic kind of picks it up, everybody can hear it. I think, whoo, thank God we got through this one. So we're all just sort of listening to the song, about 30 seconds in the song. I noticed a little bit of, I always am noticing what's going on around. I'm very aware. So I noticed kind of, a, kind of a thing happening in the back of the room, and then a, a girl who's probably 20 puts her hand up to this. And I thought, I don't have a category for this. Like, there's never been, like, I'm not Pentecostal. There's nobody raising their hand in my church services. 
Uh, is she just vibing with the song? Is she just praising Jesus? What? And I begin to realize that she starts to stand up. She wants me to call on her <laughs> in the middle of a eulogy, in the middle of a song, where somebody's playing for a eulogy. Okay, so I did what all people do. I made a vow to not look at that part of the room. Right? <laughs> I just got to stand up for Got to vibe with the song. I'm just going to let this happen. You know what I mean? But, but, you know when you're trying not to look at something, you're keenly aware of what happens there? Okay? This girl, this girl raised her hand, and uh, this person I now know, you know, I figured out it's her mom, eight months pregnant, <laughs> come walking up. Okay, well now, nobody's listening to the song. Everybody's just watching to see how this is all going to play out. And so the, the, the woman comes up and she says, that's the wrong song. <laughs> what? And what begins to happen is about a 30 second uh, cat fight, okay, over this song. And she said, Well, that's the song you sent me. So that is not the song I sing. Yes, it is a song. I picked it from your text message. She said, Well, that's the right song, but that's the wrong version. We were going to play the happy version. You're playing the sad version. <laughs> Nobody's listening to the song at this point, right? <laughs> We're all just like watching this train wreck occur. So we're maybe a minute into the song now. And uh, a little boy starts crying. Uh, they clearly ten, just uh, three rows in, so clearly somebody close in the family. But when I say cry, I, I don't know how to describe to you the sound that this kid was making. But it, it's like a wounded animal, right? In the middle of the night. Like, if I imagine a wounded goat, this is what starts happening from row three. Okay? So the song is playing. Nobody's listening. Fight is happening. Wounded goat. <laughs> uh, and this is all just kind of went home. And finally, the girl, the woman who had played the song just said, Well, it's already over now. Nobody's listening. We'll just have to listen to it. Later I gotta go take care of my fair child. And she goes along and, and then the other daughter goes, or the other the sister goes, Well, you already ruined it. She starts stomping back to her seat with her daughter. And then it's my turn. <laughs> And then I thought, praise God that I wasn't going to preach right here, but I had saved a poem. And so I went into the poem, and I did kind of get the room back, and we did kind of move forward. And uh, what are you going to do in those moments except laugh, right? What are you going to do in those moments? And I, and I really feel like those people deserve funeral. They deserve some words of hope in those moments. And I want you to know this. The other pastor never showed. <laughs> so if they hadn't brought me in, it would have just been those people in pajamas running the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole drive home, I kept thinking, I can't wait for all of you for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it, it's my belief. It's my belief. It's my belief that as followers of Jesus, we should be people of joy. And if we actually believe that Jesus is in everything, I think we should be noticing lots of stuff. So, so if I could give you one word, a word here today, is to be curious and be joyful. Look for the humor. There's lots of garbage, lots of pain in your life, lots of bad stuff. There's also a lot of really hilarious stuff out there. And the ability to laugh is important. And that's, you hear, oh, laughter is the best medicine. But let me read to you Proverbs 17.22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up bones. The Proverbs even say, cheerful heart, good medicine, crushed spirit dries up bones. I hear there's a lot of crushed spirits in this world right now. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of times Christians look at everybody as crushed as everybody else. Where's our curiosity? Where's our cheerfulness? Where's our joy? Let's keep finding those things. Two more jokes. Two more jokes. A pastor is driving back from Iowa and gets stopped for speeding in Minnesota. The officer smells alcohol on the pastor's breath. Sees an empty bottle of wine on the floor of the car. He says, sir, are you, you been drinking? Just water, replies the pastor. Having none of this, the officer slowly and deliberately asks, then why do I smell wine? Without
without missing so much as a beat. The pastor looks down at the bottle and says, Good Lord, he's done it again! <laughs>
he took a cup, shared a cup among them, poured it out, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink you all of it. And yeah, there were, there were tears later that night. And there were lots of tears the next day. But there was also joy in the celebration of this table. So smile as you come forward today. I'm going to ask if you're able to come down the center aisle and we'll head back. Again, we've got a space up here, so if you want to grab the elements and find a place and just have a prayer. Today's prayer needs to be a prayer of joy and thanksgiving. Jesus, thank you for what you've done. Let me be a person of joy that celebrates what this table is all about. If you can't come forward, we'll make sure just get uh, Greg from the back there, get his attention, and make sure to bring elements to you. Let's pray. Lord, today, may we feel the joy of this table. May we smile as we remember how much you loved us. Give us the curiosity and the cheerfulness that the rest of this world so desperately needs. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was ready. Smile and come forward. <laughs>
stand together as we sing an Easter version of Silent Night. Thank you. 